الله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون All praise is due to Allah the Exalted We praise Him We seek His help, His guidance and His forgiveness We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our sins and the evils within ourselves Whomsoever Allah guides because they are sincere, none can misguide and whomever he rightfully causes to be led astray because they are arrogant, none can guide. Now I bear witness that there's no deity worthy of worship except Allah alone. Now I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, is his servant and final messenger. For our own salvation and our own success and our own eternal happiness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us what is translated as, O believers, be mindful of Allah as He deserves. Worship Him as He deserves. And do not die except in a state of submission. And if all of us say we wish to die upon Islam, then surely we must consistently live upon it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to live upon Islam and to die upon Iman. Allahumma ameen. There's a really interesting moment in our history, a story if you will, where towards the end of the Medinan seerah, the Roman Byzantine Empire, which is considered one of the superpowers of the region. They had been a superpower for several centuries, over a hundred years. It was mentioned that the Muslims had to go out and for the first time of all the expeditions and battles had to face the Roman Byzantine Empire. So what happens? The command is there. The Prophet ﷺ announces to the companions, to the Muslims, now very large population in Medina. We have to go out. Everyone's getting ready. What happens? With over 30,000 believers, naturally in that city, in that community, you will find munafiqeen. You will find there are people who aren't even Muslim trying to infiltrate and corrupt and divide and create problems. Naturally, you will find that not all Muslims are of the same strength. So some people came up with excuses not to go. They came up with excuses that are not valid. And in Surah to tawbah a very heavy surah, these matters are addressed. The believer who has no valid excuse when it comes to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making a choice, and these choices matter. So the khutbah today is about this one particular ayah, this one particular verse that if you take it, although it has its context, if you take it, you find there are lifelong lessons in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu O believers, 89 times in the Qur'an. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu So pay closer attention. Ma lakum idha qila lakum unfiru fi sabili allahi Tha qaltum ila al-ard What is the matter with you? O believers, who is this addressing? Those who came up with excuses and the hypocrites who are living amongst them. What is the matter with you? When it's said to you, go out in the path of Allah, there was a command here, a specific historical context. That you, if thaqaltum ila al-ard, you cling to the earth. What does that mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says, if thaqaltum ila al-ard, many of the scholars of tafsir, they say this means you are clinging to something other than the command of Allah. You're not literally clinging to the earth, but you are weighed down heavily by something of an attachment, a priority other than the command of Allah at the expense of the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds those who come up with excuses, those who justify their sins, those who justify their laziness, those who justified staying back, that this life is not worth it. This life is not worth it. You're making a choice. So he says at the end of the ayah, are you satisfied, pleased with this life? Are you pleased with your choice of this world over the next? The reality of this world compared to the next is that it is insignificant. The one who created the heavens and the earth, the one who created us, and created the afterlife is telling us this life is not worth it. This life has a purpose. 
but it's not worth it to pursue the things that will cost you the eternal life. And when you think of what's happened here and how we can learn lessons from this, yes, this has its historical context. It is the expedition of Tabuk. But if you think about the lessons, there are stories we tell ourselves and there are stories we experience. The choices we make morning to night, major and minor, conscious and subconscious, sometimes tens of thousands of subconscious choices determine what is written, determine what's happened. You are part of that experience. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reprimands, He's reprimanding Muslims. He's reprimanding people who made a choice. Choosing the comfort of this world, the raha of a dunya over the raha of the afterlife. And sometimes we look at this and say, Alhamdulillah, at least I'm Muslim. But the reality is even in this journey of being Muslim, on this path towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are choices we make every single day that reflect how much we really care about the afterlife how much we really care about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how distracted we might be. Do you know why the word ithaqaltum is used here? Some of the scholars say the reason people came up with excuses, number one, the day was very long, it's summer. Number two, is very hot. So they're come up, coming up with excuses. It's long day, it's a hot day, we might not make it there, we might not make it back, it might take a month or two, Allahu alam. It's also the time in which the dates were ready in Medina to be consumed and taken. There's an economic and financial incentive to stay back when everyone is leaving the city. It's also the Roman Byzantine Empire they're going to face. They have an advanced military, a reputation. They've been around for a long time. And so some people were afraid. Some people came up with excuses. Think for yourself about what you are clinging to. Ibn al-Jawzi, rahimahullah, he says, Ila al-ard, there are many opinions about it amongst them. When Allah mentions you're weighed down heavily and you're clinging to the earth, Think of your attachments. So he says one of the opinions is it's referring to your shahawat, your desires, the things you like to do. And this could apply to every single one of us, different backgrounds and ages of all walks of life. What are the things you love to do that you personally might find are preventing you from moving forward? Things you know you should not be doing. The habits that you have that you need to let go of. Desires exist and Allah tells us about desires, but they must be channeled in a manner that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be the reason you stay back. The jama'ah is moving forward, the people are praying. It cannot be the reason you stay back with those who are sitting and those who come up with excuses. The second, he said it refers to hopes for this world. Having hopes and dreams. There was, I heard as I walked in, there was a janazah prayer right before. And where I'm from in Dearborn, we have pretty much almost every single day or every other day, there is a janazah and sometimes as the last one I attended, Sometimes you have three or four individuals. We had a nine-year-old in the recent janazah and a 25-year-old as well. And one time we had a, a toddler, a college student, and a grandfather all being buried at the same time. Reminding us that age is not a factor here. Age does not matter in terms of when you leave this world. But when it comes to hopes for this world, I want you to think about the following example. What do you hope to do the rest of this day? What are you imagining you're going to do this week? The university students who are halfway through their semesters, maybe looking at the summer, what do you think you're going to be doing? What are you planning to do? Those who have projects and you're working, you're thinking of your project management. What are the things you have in your to-do list? The things you think you're going to accomplish? Life, if you think of it as this line that is drawn in the sand by the Prophet wasallam, life is always you looking ahead and expecting that you will make it to the next day and the next goal and the next task. But the line of death crosses it horizontally. And as the line of death crosses it, your hopes beyond it are no longer, no longer obtained. You no longer reach them. So when you think about this reality, your hopes cannot be the reason that you don't make it to paradise. Your hopes cannot be the reason that you're not doing the right thing. Your hopes cannot be anything but connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That as you hope for a dunya, you're hoping to live so you can be a better believer. You're hoping that you'll make it so that you can continue doing good. You're hoping that the things that Allah blessed you with in this world of your studies, your education, your children, your family, your job, that you're using it for something beneficial, especially in times like this. And the third example or opinion that he shares, Ibn al-Jawzi, rahimahullah, he says, this could refer to your physical residence in the land. Do you have an attachment to the place that you are in? Sometimes people attach themselves to the extent that any change is too difficult to experience. Any change is too uncomfortable to go through. So they give up at the first sign of discomfort, the first sign of pain. And then they wonder when they're forced to change, 
Why is it so difficult to change? Why am I going through this and it's worse than I thought in terms of my reaction? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us throughout the Quran and we find in the sunnah as well, there are many wisdoms for why we go through what we go through. But sometimes, sometimes, the forced change that comes to you is for your own development because you refused to pursue that development on your own. You refused to do it when you had the choice. Sometimes when you're seeing what's happening in Gaza, some people will think they have less of a chance to make it tomorrow than I do here in Dallas. And the one who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that's not the case. You don't do these kinds of calculations with life and death. You could leave this world tonight. You could depart today. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding you to make choices. Are you really choosing this life over the next? A lot of times when we talk about choices and what you're satisfied with, what you're pleased with, you can, you can take this question and ask yourself, on the verge of a sin you might commit or something you are addicted to or slacking off with worship and salah or the way you treat your family, your parents, your siblings, your spouse. When you think about this ayah, ask yourself, with my choice in this moment, am I choosing the afterlife or this life? Am I choosing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being pleased with me or am I choosing my desires? When you're in school, university students, high school students and others, and you see everyone around you is cheating on an exam, everyone around you is using AI, everyone around you is finding some ways not to do what they're required to do, and you're trying to stick to what's right, you're making a choice. You're making a choice in terms of what you're pleased with. And when you're working a job, you're making choices. Are you choosing the halal income or the haram income? I was talking to a brother yesterday, subhanAllah, we're talking about the concept of income through halal. Your rizq, how much you're going to get in this world is right here, it's limited, it's capped. You pursue that rizq either through the halal or the haram or the mix of two. And the reality for the believers, you're not going to get more because you pursued the haram. You're not going to get anything different. You might have to wait a little longer, you might have to be more patient, but the halal rizq that is written for you will come your way. The life of this world is insignificant compared to the next. And why many of the scholars commented on this, and there are a lot of commentaries. Because this one gets cut off and that one is eternal. This one is temporary and that one is forever. So some people chose this life and they disobeyed Allah. They disobeyed the Prophet. The Muslims had to go defend themselves, and some people stayed back. They came up with invalid excuses. And Allah reprimanded them and ask yourself, if you were reprimanded by Allah for something today, for choosing something wrong in your lifestyle today, what would it be? What do you need to change? Whatever you don't want to find in your record when you die, when your soul leaves your body, get rid of it today. Abandon it today. Whatever you don't want to have to respond to on the day of judgment, say, Ya Allah, and come up with an excuse, get rid of it today. Because the Prophet ﷺ told us, and you can think of this uh, analogy, it's a very powerful one. The life of this world compared to the next, it's like one of you take your finger and dip it into the sea. Look at how much water you retain. Usually when we do this with a cup of water, you have a drop or two on your finger. Imagine someone who's so attached to whatever they have of this world. They're obsessed with, they're focused on that single drop or two of water. They are ignoring an entire ocean. That's waiting for you in the next life. An entire ocean of success and happiness. So be uncomfortable if you are pursuing something pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Embrace the physical discomfort that is uh, praiseworthy, that is bringing you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because embracing positive discomfort here has the potential to change our lives and the lives of the people around us. And you can apply this again to every single thing that you do. People wake up early all the time. Sometimes in the pursuit of haram and sometimes in the pursuit of halal. People wake up early and they sacrifice their sleep to take their children to school, to raise their children 24-7. They wake up early to go to work, to start a new business or a job. And many people around the world wake up early so they'll pray fajr on time. The sacrifice is there, the return is different. The sacrifice is there, but the return is different. One of the quotes of Muhammad Ali, rahimahullah, may Allah have mercy on him, that I remember from over a decade ago that inspired me was when someone asked him, how many sit-ups can you do? People like to ask wrestlers and fighters and champions these kinds of questions just to understand what we need to emulate in terms of strength, not in terms of the sport. He said, I don't know because I don't count my sit-ups. I don't start counting until it starts hurting because they are the ones that count. That's what makes you a champion. And everyone knows when you go to the gym, you're trying to get to the next level. 
if you're trying to grow emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, in your body, physically, usually you'll have gone through something once, twice, 10 times, 20 times, and you built the resilience that you needed for that next experience of life. No pain, no gain. Can be applied to many different things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for all of our shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who embrace a positive discomfort while looking at the afterlife. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being attached to this world in an unhealthy manner. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruh. Innahu huwa al ghafuru rahim. There are many stories of young companions. Young companions like Ibn Abbas, young, young companions like Usama. When you think of these young companions, you find inspiration, and that inspiration shows you that everyone has choices, but these choices don't wait. These choices matter now. Don't think of your choice that you need to change tomorrow or next week. The choices you're making today. And a lot of the youth, a lot of high school students, a lot of college students, if we are constantly bombarded with the message that you have more time or the phrase, a long life ahead of you, you might be deceived by a dunya. You might be deceived for a moment thinking, what? Well, I can change later. I can start learning another time. A lot of the young companions that we are now referencing and talking about in all our lectures and our classes and our series, don't you think they also wanted to sit back and relax and chill? A dunya is very deceptive like that. But those who put in the effort, those who develop themselves, they're the ones who ended up having multiple sources of sadaqah jariyah with their knowledge, their ilm, their impact, their leadership. Start young. And for those who are already in a situation where you understand that the formative years of your life don't come back, for many of the high school or college students especially, the formative years don't come back. These are not years of YOLO and wasting your time and just killing everything and being impulsive. These are the years of really developing yourself. And one of the greatest things I've been hearing for the last three and a half, four months, a number of students who are looking at the situation in Gaza and saying, now I'm looking at my studies and my work in a very different lens. Now I'm going to intend everything I do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit the ummah. Now my education, my career, the parents, the mothers, the fathers who are saying, I'm going to raise my child while looking at what's happening in the world with this structural injustice and saying, I want to fix a long-term problem. But that requires long-term work. And that requires us to make choices every day. These are choices that are inspired by the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us consistency. So once again, embrace positive discomfort in the pursuit of what is good. Ramadan is around the corner. We have that example of fasting for the sake of Allah, standing in prayer. It's nothing compared to what our brothers and sisters are going through. So as you're making dua for them, as you're engaging politically for them, as you're voting as well, and I understand even locally you guys have some obligations uh, today, as you're taking advantage of everything you can do, make sure you yourself are growing and developing in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for all of our shortcomings and bring down His swift justice and His relief to our brothers and sisters in every land and place. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and guide others through us. In Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayu aladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabina Muhammadin fil awaleen wa fil akhireen wa fil malai al-a'la ila yawm al-deen. Allahumma ansur al-islam wa izzal muslimin. Allahumma ansur al-muslimin al-mustadafina fi kulli makan. Allahumma farij al-karba'an al-muslimin fi kulli makan. في كل مكان في كل مكان يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم فرج الكرب عن المسلمين في فلسطين اللهم إنهم خوفا فأمنهم جياع فأطعمهم مظلومون فانصرهم محتاجون إليك يا قوي يا عزيز اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم اللهم ارزقنا حسن الخاتمة واجعل خير أيامنا يوم نلقاك ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنا وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأقم الصلاة <تصفيق> 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 <تصفيق>